Good morning, Bitcoins, and welcome to Let's Set Up a Trezor Model T Bitcoin Wallet live with Q&A. My name is Thomas Hunt. Welcome to the World Crypto Network. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and a share so that more people can find the show. As you can see here on the screen, the Trezor Model T Wallet is now available for everyone starting now. Uh, you can buy yours at trezor.io. Uh, there's a blog about it. And if you want to, you can use the affiliate code MADBITCOINS in the link below. I uh, get a little bit of a reward for that. And thank you for your support. But now let's get back to the review. So here I am. How's it going? Uh, hopefully you can hear me and see me. Uh, this is going to be a very rough review. This is not edited. This is live. Uh, so I'm probably going to screw this up. Uh, I haven't set one of these up before. This is not a pre-canned review where I have the set up one here and I have the done one here and I pull the brownies out of the oven and there they are. Uh, this is a, a, an attempt uh, live. I do have a Trezor Model T here. Uh, they are available to everyone, but Trezor was kind enough to send me one. Uh, this is a free Trezor, uh, full disclosure. They did send me my other Trezor years ago. And when I met the Ledger guys in Miami, they gave me a free Ledger. So doing all right on the hardware wallet front. I uh, would like to try out the new Ledger with a little screen, uh, if anyone from Ledger is watching. And uh, thank you to Trezor. Uh, thanks to Slush and everybody. I got to meet some of them uh, in Prague. Uh, it was really neat at the HCPP uh, convention last year, and I hope to go next year too. So yeah, I'm counting on you guys in the chat for lots of questions and fun comments uh, as I screw this up. I'm also telling you in advance, uh, there's going to be points where I show you a black screen and I don't talk much. I'm going to be writing down the words. I hope to do this securely for myself uh, to use these for donations. But if I screw it up and I expose my private keys, uh, there's nothing on this thing right now, uh, except maybe you guys send me some. So yeah, yeah, Mark, this is marketing, but I'm not paid. I'm not a part of Trezor. They did send me a free wallet. Uh, I do think that was nice. And as part of that deal, I'm going to talk about it and I've been putting it off for a long time. Uh, I think they started, they were going to send me one in February. Uh, it's May. I don't know. It's been a long time. So uh, yeah, they say in the chat, I can trust them with my private keys. <laughs> so, um, so here we go. Uh, let's start with the packaging. Uh, on the front of the thing, you can barely see the name. Uh, I want to advise against this, Trezor. They did make it kind of an embossed white Trezor logo, but I'm reflecting it back to you guys. You can't see it at all. So uh, that's a fail. You got to put your name in black. I want to see your name. Now, backside, uh, Trezor Model T, some information. It says cryptocurrency hardware wallet. Manage all your cryptocurrencies and digital identities with ease of touch. Interact securely by verifying and confirming all operations on the device screen. Experience security at no cost to your convenience. Hashtag security made easy, Trezor.io. And it has a list of coins and things that it supports. Uh, Bitcoins, applications, Dash, Ethereum, Litecoin, NEM. Uh, interesting choices. Zcash, authentication, shell, encryption, and more. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to use it for all of those things today. I uh, hope to set up the Bitcoin wallet, maybe a couple of other wallets, uh, put the donation addresses out there. And, and if you want to put money on this thing, that's cool. Uh, so here it is. Totally sealed from the plastic. I should have got scissors. Um, <laughs> you're like, just open it live. <laughs> so, oh, well, I'm going to open it live. Uh, so here we go. All right. So packaging gone, level one. Uh, slides out, sleeve, and oh, that's pretty cool. It has a window and it says the safe place for your coins. Uh, so very cool. Looks like I got a black one. Cool. My other one is a white one. Uh, so this is fun to have other ones. And I did get a, uh, a cool wallet thing from uh, Crypto HW Wallet. Uh, sponsored me on my prog trip. Check him out. He did a uh, leather wallets uh, for the old ones. And I think he's doing leather wallets for the new ones. So if you open this thing up, I opened it wrong. <laughs> Let me put it back together. Okay, so it did have kind of some Apple packaging. Um, I went in through the side, um, but if you open it properly uh, through this part here, it has like a little one, two, three, get started, a USB cable and the Trezor itself. Okay, so first the Trezor itself, uh, very light in the hand. I noticed the buttons are missing. Obviously, this is the touch model. And uh, here's the back. 
And let's notice right here, they put a tamper resistant strip right on the USB. I think that's a good idea. Hopefully this Trezor has never been opened. I would warn everyone not to buy a Trezor or a Ledger on eBay or maybe on the used section of Amazon or any other ones that don't have this thing. Even if you have this thing, somebody could have bought this, bought their own little things, put them on there. Uh, you're putting a lot of trust in this device if you're gonna put thousands of dollars in here. Uh, so everyone needs to do a good job securing it, buying it from a safe source. Um, so yeah, tamper resistant, Jeremy says, not tamper proof. <laughs> and remember they had these things with the uh, Casatius coins at DEF CON years ago. Uh, they basically boiled them over some chemicals and they removed the little slips, wrote down the private keys and returned the little slips. Uh, so it can be there. So first I'm gonna, it says, uh, Get started, connect your Trezor to your smartphone or computer. That's interesting. I haven't done a smartphone setup. Uh, open Trezor.io start in your browser, follow instructions and sleep tight. <laughs> it says at the bottom, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, bonus, place the dock anywhere for your convenience. Uh, so let's see what we got here. You're seeing my private key in the screen reflection. Oh, I'm doomed already. Okay, so first they sent me a couple of stickers, a Trezor, black and white, very cool. Got a bunch of those in Prague too. Uh, <laughs> it's like I'm just wrecking the packaging here. I tore this part too. It's a pretty bad unpacking video. Um, okay, so it's got my personal recovery seed, which right now I'm gonna show you because it's a blank piece of paper. So personal recovery seed, as you can see, totally blank. I've heard reports of people on eBay uh, they got theirs and the key was already filled out. Oh, how nice. Don't put any money on one of these if the key's already filled out. It's complicated, but the magic words that I'm going to write down are actually my money. Uh, so if somebody else has your magic words, <laughs> they're going to take your money. Uh, more stickers. Actually, I'd say kind of a lot of stickers. There's four stickers in here. That seems a little needy. I'm just joking with you. Okay, so there's a duplicate copy of my personal recovery seed card. Uh, so I'm guessing I'm going to write that down on two cards. And there's a small uh, getting started manual. Um, no one reads these. I'm going to read the getting started manual. I'm going to try to do what I can to uh, do this thing properly. And there's um, what looks like they say it's a dock. I don't know what this is. It's a piece of plastic with a sticky on the back. And I guess the Trezor maybe attaches to, oh, it's magnetic or something. Yeah, magnetic. Uh, so it's a little magnetic dock. So you could like stick your Trezor uh, to the bottom of something or under your desk or something. So that's pretty cool. That's a cool new feature that I hadn't seen before, the Trezor dock. Uh, cool piece of plastic. <laughs> All right, so let's see what else we got here. Um, device, oh, and we also had a USB cable, uh, which is, Oh, no, I'm going to take that back. It's USB-C on one end. It's USB on the other end. The new Trezor is USB-C, uh, which is very cool. But remember, to use it on my Mac, I'm going to need one of these uh, to make the USB into USB-C on both ends. Uh, but that is kind of futury uh, that it does have the new USB-C. Uh, it's funny to think about your old Trezor with that old connector. Uh, I even store a little cable in my box just in case <laughs> so I can connect it. Uh, you have to keep these things future proof. If you uh, uh, discovered a box or something, you know, you, you want to try to get the money out of there. So let's see, what does it say in the instructions? Getting started. Okay, device specifications. Trezor is a device that enables you to securely manage your digital identity. Trezor needs no battery since it draws on power through its USB connection. All private da data are stored in a persistent memory, which will not be erased even if you do not use the device for an extended period of time. Trezor may be used for a variety of ever-expanding purposes through a wide range of compatible software. Please refer to respective software documentation for instructions. Okay, so recommended setup is to pretty much the same thing, connect it to your computer, and go to trezor.io to start. Uh, so I've got my cable. Uh, every time I connect something to my computer, I, I lose video or audio or something. So I'll be very careful doing that. USB-C is a uh, flaky, flaking mistress. 
I'm going to go ahead and remove the tamper resistant sticker and I'm going to see what happens next. Uh, this probably is one of the parts I won't show you uh, as I think we're going towards me writing down my private keys. <clears throat> I'm going to go uh, even so far as to uh, turn off my camera and maybe even turn off my microphone so that you can't analyze what I'm writing down. <laughs> I don't know, um, something like that. Okay, so I removed the tamper resistant sticker. I don't know this is, if this is cool or not, but it has a little thing that it left behind. It's kind of, kind of ghost looking. Um, but whatever, it's a little treasury thing. So boom, USB-C, nice solid connection, pops up a white and black treasure screen, uh, nicer than before, kind of animated. I don't know if I want to show you. Well, I'll show you some part of it. Here's part of the thing. You can't see it. Um, and you can't see it. So oh, there it is. Welcome. So you can kind of see. It has a really nice screen. Looks like a... Uh, I don't know, dot matrix or whatever you want to say. It looks like a nice screen. Go to trezor.io uh, to start. So here we go. Just remind everyone to give a thumbs up and a share. This is a live uh, setup and demonstration. So showing me a pretty basic screen. Could probably show it to you guys. I don't know. I don't know when it's going to show me my... Uh, my private key. So we are playing an exciting game here. Uh, <laughs> but it says, uh, congratulations, you made a decision, you bought a Trezor, blah, blah, blah. Um, you get to choose between the Trezor 1, which is, I guess, what they're calling the original Trezor, and the Trezor Model T. Uh, so I'm going to just show you the screen and then take it away. Uh, but I do think my, my private words are going to be displayed on the device, not on the screen as they're supposed to stay in the little USB box and never be transmitted to the internet. So it says, you are opening Trezor beta wallet, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you, you understand, I understand. Okay, so now it says, it's time to install the device firmware. And just a quick FYI for anybody that's not too computery, firmware is the scariest update. Firmware is the never restart, never unplug, take your hands away from the machine and wait 10 minutes. Uh, so firmware is actually updating the chips on the device. Uh, so if it gets loaded halfway, some of the things don't have a way to recover from that. Uh, my Apple Watch uh, was doing a firmware update and I was impatient and I'd set it up on a bad system. You know, you need to have a good connection, have good power and these kind of things before you do a firmware update. And uh, I bricked it. I totally killed my Apple Watch, called them up, I didn't understand it was a firmware update. I thought it was a normal update, so I wasn't being serious about it. Uh, I called them up, sent it back. They fixed it. They sent it back to me. It was fine. Uh, but we don't want to have to do that, especially with our Trezor, especially with our money. So firmware update, serious update. I uh, think we got some good power. Here we go. Let's install the firmware update. So single click, nice stuff. Didn't have to download anything. No unzipping, no gzipping. It's uh, very easy for new people. Uh, so we're doing good so far. Ooh, we're going to need a pen. That's something we don't have. So let's hold on just a second while I go find a pen. We'll be right back. All right, fortunately, a pen was not far to be found. Of course, it's curious to see what kind of pen will they allow to write on this piece of paper. I usually use these little felt pens. I think that's going to be a non-starter. I got this one. It's a ballpoint, but it's gel. Uh, so I don't know how that's going to work either. Uh, so it's very important. Sometimes they make these things too glossy and they won't hold any. And again, I'm writing down the words for my money. These are the most important words you're going to write down. So uh, Trezor did the firmware update. Let's show you the next screen. It's pretty simple. It says, welcome to Trezor, create new wallet or recover wallet. So if I had done a firmware update on a wallet that I already had uh, and I needed to recover, that's what recovery is about. So you can recover from these mistakes, but still my policy, let's be careful going forward, try to make less mistakes. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the camera create new wallet. Okay, so I click create new. It says preparing your treasure. Fair amount of loading bars, but they're loading nicely. 
Oh yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see the glasses. You'll see the reflection. Okay, so it says, um, "Your treasure is ready." But first, uh, let's familiarize you. So I'm gonna show you these screens again. They're gonna sneak this up on me. It'll be like, and bam, here's your private key. <laughs> well, if they do, uh, they're gonna hear about it. <laughs> but let's see what we can do here. Your treasure is ready. Let's check out the new features. Use labeling, add transaction comments, rename accounts or addresses. It looks like it's got a Dropbox button there, so I should be able to store some kind of backup of my treasure in a Dropbox. That sounds interesting. There may be security things there though. So let's go here. Uh, verify address authentic authenticity on your Trezor. Uh, you can click the button next to your address and double click it to show the full address. That's interesting. And two-factor authentication. The Trezor is now just, not just a Bitcoin wallet, but can also be used for 2FA. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And continue to wallet. Your Trezor is not backed up 10%. Uh, it looks like the words are right here and I have no transactions yet. So I want to congratulate Trezor on letting people set up their wallet without having to do the words. Uh, this is pretty cool. Uh, also, I don't think I'm exposing any private keys on the screen right now, uh, so good on them for that too. But uh, what it says right here is protect your coins from the unexpected. And this used to be a required part of the setup, and it, it should be, but at the same time, if you're brand new and you just wanna say, bam, I wanna receive some Bitcoin, uh, Oh, see, look, it's warning me before I even push receive. It's like, you haven't backed this up. Uh, back it up before you receive Bitcoin. So good on them. Good interface. Um, would like to see the thing. And show the address. I will take the risk. Oh, okay, so nice address and everything. Where's the QR code? <laughs> Come on, guys. Um, okay, so check address on Trezor. So this is interesting. It's confirming on the Trezor that this is the right one, so I click, check, and then it shows me the QR code. Oh, also on the Trezor screen, it's got this great bright yellow screen at the top that says needs backup. Um, so I don't know if that's gonna come out well. Oh, there you go, you can kind of see it. Um, so it says it's got a bright yellow screen at the top, you can't see the colors, but it says needs backup. So good on Trezor, warning people that this thing is not backed up. Uh, it is neat that it does work already. <laughs> When's a giveaway? Uh, well, if I if I had another one, I'd probably give it away. Uh, although I I do think people should start having more than one Trezor. Uh, it's hard for me. I only have a couple of these things, and I don't have much money. But if you have too much money, I think it is time to to try to get a couple of Trezors and a couple of ledgers and uh, put them in a couple of different places and put a different amount of money in each one. I mean, it's really uh, it's not that much money. It is kind of fun if you think about it. It's a little stressful to move around all your money. Um, but let's go ahead and let's see what this backup process entails. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys back on the screen share. Uh, hopefully you can't see all my reflections and everything. Hopefully my pen works. Again, this is a, a non-computerized uh, pen. Jaggy in the comments was worried my pen might be uh, uh, held or you know, uh, if it was one of those magic uh, spy pens, it could capture everything I write down and then you could get my code that way. Uh, so it says my treasure is not backed up. So we're going to go into treasure backup mode. And it says create a backup in three minutes. Okay. So it says before you create a backup, you should know your recovery seed is the backup key to all your cryptocurrencies and applications. Your recovery seed can only be displayed once. Never make a digital copy of your recovery seed and never upload it online doesn't say anything about doing it during a demonstration. Keep your recovery seed in a safe place. Trezor cannot be held responsible for financial losses incurred through improper care of sensitive information. It says things to avoid. Do not take a photo of your recovery seed. Do not write it into a computer. Do not save it on cloud storage. Never upload it on the internet. So... To the best of my knowledge, I don't know that my computer's being hacked. If my computer's being hacked, then I guess they own all this. Uh, they own it live. Uh, congrats. Uh, if my computer's not hacked and it is secure, I should be able to successfully back up this device. I suppose there is kind of an interesting idea there with Trezor not requiring the backup anymore. You could just create a Trezor, have the Trezor, and it would be the single device. It would be the single owner of those keys. Once again, if your treasure failed, 
That would be the single device with your keys. Uh, making this backup allows you to restore your money. Uh, what's the price of the Model T? I don't know. I thought it was around, I want to say like 200. Uh, let's go to trezor.io. Uh, get your Trezor. <laughs> oh, I know my screen recording. Google, Google, if if Google is still sharing my screen, I'm still doomed. Uh, so maybe I should switch to a different screen. It says, oh, 200 is actually way too high. It's 139 euros. 139 euros. So let's see. What is that in American? That's $161. Uh, so not bad. And the old one was a little bit less. I think it's uh, it's now 89 euros for the old Trezor. And that would be around $100. So $100 or $160. Um, no, that's a good point. My Trezor key... I, I believe it will not be displayed on the screen. It'll only be displayed on the device. So the hackers, even the Google, will not be able to see my key. So let's say continue. It says, do not connect device. Confirm action on the Trezor. It says, never make a digital copy of your recovery seed and never upload it online. I understand. OK, so now it's happening slowly. And I'm going to do two copies of this. Um, Okay, first of all, to Trezor, you guys got to print on the actual cards. You printed gray on the card. You need to print black. Uh, I can't read it. Uh, I'm not that old. So I'm very carefully writing down my words. Maybe you can use a uh, program to analyze how I'm moving my pen. If you do, uh, I guess you deserve the money. Um, also, if you're a bad speller, take your time. You're writing down words that equal your money. Uh, congrats to Trezor for putting a second uh, seed card in here. I'm going to go ahead and take the initiative and make a second copy of my seed, which is kind of like having another Trezor. Uh, each one of these seeds can be placed in a, a safe deposit box or a safe or uh, under your house, or you could put it in a jar and you could dig underground and bury it in cement. I don't know, you can do whatever you want with these seeds and uh, and you keep them secure, that's your money. You can always recover your money. You don't even need the treasure. Is it just 12 words? Yes, it's 12 words. Uh, so far, it's presented four words on the first screen. Then it says swipe. Uh, I swiped and it's revealed the second set of words. Uh, and yeah, this is definitely the most exciting part for you watching at home. <laughs> I was I didn't know how to make this like more fun or or spread it speed it up or anything. It's a mechanical process. I want to do it right. Uh, I hope to use this for donations and such. It would be a nice way to just keep them all together and do some alt coins or whatever as well. Uh, most of these words are very short words, and these words are um, all in a list. So there is a unique set of words. You can't just use any word. Uh, it's not going to come up with like discombobulated or, or something. Uh, so I'm going back through, um, completing my second run here. Let's see. Now, in the other versions and in the ledger, they do a really good job of testing you on the word uh, because you need to know these words. Uh, so usually you get annoyed. You want to move through software quickly. You like wrote words down, you, you know, you may be able to read them later. You may not be able to read them later, um, but it would be great. Even something right now I'm, I'm noticing, uh, I should be writing them off the treasure. I shouldn't be copying my other one <laughs> because if I make a mistake, that mistake would be transmitted to both of them. Uh, so there were some strange lines coming up on my treasure. I don't know what that's about. Uh, just some visual interference. Um, but now it says recovery. See, it says hold to confirm. I have not been quizzed on this yet. So let's see what they say. So, so hold. I have to physically put the finger on the screen like a quick time event. So here we go. A little stressful. Okay. Oh, good. It's saying type the second word and it has a uh, ABC, like a nine panel keyboard, kind of like a, uh, a phone, like a phone keyboard. 
uh, which should be good enough to type a four-letter word. Uh, many of these are four-letter words. Okay, the keyboard is pretty small and pretty hard to use. I'm going to try to use it again. Here we go. But again, this is all happening on the Trezor, presumably not hacked. It also says, do not disconnect the, the device, which I wish it could do this without being connected. That would be my, my wish list. Okay, I failed twice entering the second word. I'm going to try again. Okay, it's not... I don't know if it's one of those keyboards where you have to type the letter three times, or if you can just type and it'll figure it out. It doesn't seem like it's one of those, so let's see. Okay, so yeah, you have to type the letters one at a time. It's not like figuring them out. So if you want to type a, a U, you have to push the STU button three times. Uh, no big deal there, just not totally intuitive. Okay, so it had grizz me on one word, it's grilling me on another word now. Uh, once again, I can't show you this part. Uh, you can hear on the screen where I'm tapping, dun dun dun. Um, but yeah, let's let's type another word. Well, that was interesting. I only typed a couple of the letters and then it filled in the word. Uh, so that was convenient. I don't know if that's secure. Okay, so then it, it cleared off the words. It's bringing up a screen that says, My Trezor. And it says on the screen, you have successfully backed up the device. Uh, as far as I know, this should be the last time that it tries to show me the recovery seed or that it tries to show me the private keys. Uh, as everyone said, yes, it didn't show it on the computer. The Trezor was connected to the computer, but it only showed me the magic words on my device. So... It looks like the next steps are to name my device, uh, set up a pin lock. Uh, we'll see how that goes if that's on the computer. Security reasons, name your device. Okay, so I'll call this World Crypto Trezor. Also, people, oh, look, you can't. Not enough word. It can be World Crypto Trezor. Trezo. So let's go with WCN Trezor. That sounds fun. Uh, did I cover up my camera? The NSA was watching. It's possible, but they really need a good angle to get the desk, right? Uh, they have cameras on me at all times, but not necessarily on my desk and what I'm writing. <laughs> they also have suggestions. Look, they suggest awesome treasure, fluffy treasure, precious treasure, winky treasure. Uh, so that's fun. Um, all right. So now, do you really want to use the label? I have to confirm that on the device. This is another good security feature. So the device label cannot be changed without you confirming on the device. You chose a wonderful name. Uh, you choose a wonderful name. I think chose has two O's. Uh, since you're running a screen recorder, you wouldn't trust it. Yeah, but it's not recording the screen on the Trezor. Uh, do you really want to set up a new pin? Sure. Okay. Once again, with the pin, it's doing it on the device, not on the screen. So that's cool. It's got a 10 pin key entry thing. Let's see. Think of something good for my pin, something that I'll actually remember, uh, something that's not terribly easy. I don't know. Pins aren't great to do. Uh, let's see. Oh, and you can't see it either. Okay, so downgrade to treasure on that one. I can't see if I've typed anything. <laughs> so uh, you got to show the, uh, the number. I'm going to do it a second time. I hope that means that I'm going to type it correctly. Uh, but some of us have good sized fingers here. Uh, we need a little uh, display. Okay, so I set a pin. That's great. And they want me to subscribe to their newsletter, and I don't want to. Uh, Let's skip this step. Uh, follow them on Medium or Twitter. Uh, that's cool. Good stuff. And awesome. You're all set. Your treasure is set to go. Uh, finish. All right. So now I have a WCN treasure device that's connected. You can see here on the left. Um, good. It didn't show me my keys. <laughs> if I click that, I think it would. 
Uh, so I'm going to stay out of there. As you can see here on the left-hand side, it supports Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic, and NEM. Uh, this is all out-of-the-box support. Uh, so let's just walk you guys through a little bit of how this looks like. Here's my account number one. Uh, this is a Bitcoin account. It says 0.00 BTC. Uh, I can push the Receive button, click Show Full Address. And uh, again, it's doing this confirm address on the Trezor. So I can check that the address that the Trezor has created is being shown on the screen. Also, I can say my Trezor is definitely showing some blinking. Uh, there's some blinking going on. I don't know if it's getting from getting power from the screen or just how their little screen functions. Uh, but there's been some blinking. Uh, but here's my Bitcoin address. I can go ahead and copy this right here. Uh, I've got a uh, file over here. I'm storing this kind of information. so. Maybe use it for donations. It looks like it starts with a three. I guess that that's a SegWit address. Uh, it's not start with a one. So that's cool. Uh, can I ha hide all the scam coins? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure they just stay here. Um, but just to show people, uh, let's see if I pull this out of here, go back over here. Here's a Bitcoin address that it just created. I can copy and paste this into blockchain.info. I think they support the new addresses, right? Well, well it comes up anyway. And I'll bring this back over here. Uh, there's my brand new address on blockchain.info. So you could send money to this. Where's my phone? Might have a little money. Let's see what I can do. Uh, so we can try this out live. I have uh, one of my other wallets on my phone, probably less secure. And I'll see if I have like five bucks or something I can send to this so we can test it out live here on the air. And uh, you'll see what happens, how the Bitcoin goes into your Trezor wallet, and then it just stays there, hopefully. So here we go. Have to find the wallet that has money in it. Well, that's a good wallet. It keeps getting money. All right, and send. So I'm going to click the QR code scan button. You just scan that QR code, it's your address. And let's see, I could send all of it, I could send some of it. Let's try sending that much, no. Oh, it's only a few dollars anyway. Well, anyway, here's one that's a 0 .002. Uh, let's give this a try. It says the regular fee is going to be eight cents for an hour let's see the priority fee 18 cents uh let's give the priority fee a track uh they say things aren't very busy right now so it shouldn't matter that much but to me 18 cents versus eight cents uh not a big deal so let's go ahead and send that out are you sure you want to send second password good job uh, blockchain.info keeping it secure and sent um, it's a bit, it's not that secure as I could obviously do it with just the one device, uh, but this is more of a light wallet uh, for keeping small amounts of money. If you want a really secure wallet, you get something like a Trezor or a Ledger. And we can see right here, the uh, $15 or so that I sent uh, is an unconfirmed transaction on blockchain.info. And if we go right here into account number one, we can now see this transaction uh, that we got $14.50. Uh, Trezor shows you how much money you have. They show the rate uh, when it was received, if it's been sent. Uh, down here, we can see it's an unconfirmed transaction. Uh, so the Trezor is working and it did receive Bitcoin. Uh, just a quick setup if you wanted to try another coin, like uh, let's try Litecoin. It's the same kind of thing. You just come into Trezor, it loads for a while, it opens it up gives you a bunch of strange warnings about Litecoin addresses, uh, but then it just creates an account here, one Litecoin or zero Litecoin on the side, number one, and you don't need to do anything. You just go to receive, uh, receive Litecoin, show the address, please wait. Okay, it's doing the same thing to confirm the address. So I can confirm that the address was made by the Trezor on the Trezor, and then boom, it showed me a QR code. I can just take this over here, write this down for later. Litecoin. Um, there you go. So if you wanted to send me Litecoin, you could scan this QR code on your screen. 
and send the Litecoin. The same thing, I assume, for Bitcoin Cash. Oh, it's got a big warning. This is not your Bitcoin wallet. BTC and BCH share the same address format and can potentially be mis mixed up. Make sure that you are not sending and receiving coins to their respective wallets. Do not receive Bitcoins to the addresses in this BCH wallet. Do not send Bitcoin Cash coins to Bitcoin addresses. Good warning. Uh, well, well done. I will confirm. And then presumably the wallet should act the same as the other wallets. It's creating me a Bitcoin Cash account here on the side, number one. And if I click receive, show the full address, uh, confirm on the Trezor, address matches up. Notice they do have a one in it now. And boom, I've got a Bitcoin Cash address. So I don't think anyone will use that, uh, but there it is. Um, put it on the screen. Uh, Bitcoin Gold, not a big fan. <laughs> Got hacked recently, probably lost a bunch of its value. Uh, too bad I didn't split that off. Um, but the same kind of thing. Oh, it says this is your Bitcoin Gold wallet. To claim your Bitcoin Gold coins, please use our coin splitting tool. Uh, so it does look like Trezor has a splitting tool now for Bitcoin Gold. So you can get that if you want it. And the same kind of thing. Show the full address. Uh, confirm on the Trezor. Looks good. And Bitcoin Gold. And so I'm just creating a list of these on the side. I'm copying and pasting the address. This is like my public address. This is like your email. This is where people send you things. I don't think that anyone's going to send me any Bitcoin Gold. Uh, but as you can see, it's pretty fast and easy just to click on it, just to set up this account. If you were doing the same thing, trying to get your coins off of an exchange. Remember, when your coins are on an exchange like Bittrex, they own the coins. Uh, when you transfer them to your Trezor or your Ledger, you own the coins. Uh, so this is an important step. Here's a Dash wallet just created right here. Dash used to be called Dark Coin. And if I tell it to show the full address, confirm on the Trezor, boom, I've got a Dash Coin address. So uh, it seems like a big deal to get included on the Trezor. I'll bet a lot of people are, are fighting now, trying to get included. Already did Litecoin. I'll do some Zcash. Uh, see how that goes. Uh, same kind of process. We're not seeing anything, even though these coins are very different in their background, I'm not seeing anything on the Trezor to make them harder to use uh, or even to really differentiate them th that much. They have their icons. Uh, they have their names. Uh, they are just coins on a wallet. The wallet doesn't seem to care much uh, what the coins are. Uh, so that's pretty cool if you're a fan of these coins. And Zcash, boom, done. Uh, okay, so Ethereum, I'm not sure what it's going to do. Ah, uh, see, so you have to go to My Ether Wallet, and then you have to create an account. To this, or and also you have to make a choice between My Ether Wallet or My Crypto because they had a fight. I I heard a rumor on the internet that it was a breakup between two people. I don't know that to be uh, for sure. Oh wait, what the fuck is a blockchain? Uh, okay, so it looks like it sent me to Mew. I can select the Trezor right here. And I can say that I want to create a My Ether wallet and I want to link it to a Trezor. So I'm going to give this a shot right here. Uh, again, hoping not to expose my private keys, uh, but creating the Ethereum wallet is a little bit different than creating the other one. So it says export public key for Ether account number one. I, I don't know what this means as a new user. So I'm going to go OK. Um, <laughs> I, I'm hoping these are not my uh, private keys. I never used this uh, wallet before. I don't know what all these networks are. Uh, please select the address you'd like to balance with. I mean, none of these have anything. Uh, I don't know anything about this. So uh, I'm just going to click this and uh, hope it works. It says wallet successfully decrypted. And I've used my Ether wallet a little bit before. Uh, so I'm going to assume this is my public uh, Ethereum account. It came, came with a uh, bumper in the paste. Not good. Because uh, they put a UL or a LI and something in here. Um, let's see. So Ethereum, how to secure your funds. Uh, as far as I know, this is my Ethereum address. And that this new wallet is linked to my Trezor. And that I can only log into it using my Trezor. I don't know very much about this section, not claiming to be an expert on this. I've used uh, my Ether wallet a few times with the Curio Cards project 
uh, but not really since then. Uh, but there it is. The Trezor now uh, has Ethereum, I guess. Uh, Ethereum Classic. So it says the same thing. Go to my Ether wallet. Uh, that time I let it wipe out my Trezor thing. Okay, so connect with Trezor. Great. Connect Trezor to continue. Export public key for Ether Classic account number one. Okay. Now this time it's selected over here for Trezor ETC. Uh, so I'm guessing that you can use my Ether wallet with all of these coins, uh, whether it is the Testnet, the Expanse Network, Ether Gem, Music Coin, Callisto, Ubix, Singular, DTV, uh, Ledger ETC, Ledger ETH. That's strange. They have different connections for Ledger or Treasure. Um, interesting. Uh, Testnet, whatever Elysium is. Uh, so very functional uh, Ethereum Classic wallet and Ethereum wallet. I'm going to do the same thing I did there unlock my thing hope that this is my public key and store this as my ethereum classic key uh, same thing as the other one small note to my ether wallet if they're watching it when i copy and paste it it did come with a ul or an li a little uh bullet point uh that's not great <laughs> i don't want that uh in case you ever use your software uh, that'd be a useful note now, I do think, unfortunately, it wiped out the window that I had the treasure in. So I'm going to uh, take a risk here and go back and see if it loads me back into the treasure. Uh, if it exposes everything, what it does. Okay, so it loaded back to the Zclash Trezor. And now I have an Ethereum Classic address. So there's one left. Uh, let's go for that. Nem, uh, Nem Wallet, Download Universal Client. <sighs> this sounds... This sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I was hoping, I was hoping to finish this out. Uh, Nem downloads desktop client. Uh, don't know what this is. Okay, so Nem, I'm going to pass on for right now because I just don't know enough about uh, what that is. But if we look at the wallet right here, it's got all these coins. Uh, there's some Bitcoin uh, that I sent it as a test. Uh, it has Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, Ethereum, Ethereum Classic, both through my Ether wallet or my crypto. So if you have a, a choice or a preference there. Uh, it didn't expose my private keys. It never showed them to the internet. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and unplug it now. It doesn't, um, I don't see an eject button. Uh, Oh, there's an eject button it says forget device uh, in the interface. So I'm going to click forget device. It says this only removes your device from the list on the left. Your Bitcoins are still safe and you can access them by reconnecting your treasure. Uh, so I'm going to click forget. It says disconnecting your wallet. It's taking a couple of seconds. Good thing I didn't just unplug it like I normally do. <laughs> that would have been bad. Uh, a lot of your normal setup things need to be thrown out when you're setting up your treasure or your ledger. Uh, I, I click next through all those boxes on Windows. Don't do that. Go slowly. Uh, I write things down really fast and sloppily. Don't do that. Go slowly. Uh, I wait for things to disconnect. It says, oh, now it says your Trezor wallet will forget your Trezor right after you disconnect it. <laughs> so, uh, so here it is, unplugging the Trezor. It's back to being a black box. As they said in the install or whatever, it has no uh, power of its own. I need to clean off the screen. It's got smudges on it already. And also those smudges could probably expose my private key. Uh, you could track back and analyze uh, what buttons I pushed. I don't know. Um, but it was a neat device. It was a good setup. I think it was pretty quick. Uh, I didn't track the time, maybe half an hour or so. Uh, we have a fully set up Trezor. I've backed up the recovery seed twice. Remember, you can store those backups in your safe deposit box or in your safe or at a friend's house. You can bury a hole in the yard and put them in a jar or whatever you want to do. Those are your private keys. So if you lose your treasure box, you can take your little recovery seed, buy a new treasure box, type it in. Boom, it sets right up. Uh, I don't know if you can do that just on the Internet with your recovery seed. You might be able to do that to another wallet, uh, recover it through Ledger or something. I don't know for sure. Uh, but treasure your private key. Keep that safe. Uh, I'd say, yeah, positive review for the Trezor. I put 15 bucks in. I hope it stays there. Uh, I showed you guys all the addresses. If you want to send me Bitcoin or Ethereum or 
Bitcoin Gold or any of the things we talked about today, you can use those addresses. I'll publish all these addresses um, just to see what happens uh, because it was so easy to set them up. In the past, you had to use like an exchange. You had to have a bunch of exchange addresses. Those aren't great for sending to. These are presumably better addresses for sending to for donations and things like that. Um, but if you wanted to set up a nonprofit or a charity or anything like that to accept Bitcoin and other donations, I would, I'd recommend the Trezor. Pretty simple setup. Uh, you can follow along here. Like I said, it's not the cleanest thing. I didn't have a pre-done Trezor and I, I'm probably not going to edit this. Uh, maybe someone else will edit this. <laughs> but uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, go through a quick uh, show you the QR code once more. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll loop around back for questions here. Um, let's see, is my NEM download? There's a Bitcoin page. If you'd like to donate Bitcoin to the address on my treasure. Oh, look, somebody sent me $3. Uh, thanks so much to Bitcoin Yoda in the chat for sending me three bucks. And um, I think this is about it. Let's see what else do I have. Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to Nunya Business. He's making bacon. Uh, I've never even seen bacon not cut. <laughs> not from the supermarket. Uh, so that looks really good if you're into bacon. Uh, I know a lot of people are vegetarians and stuff, but you don't have to be that. The Stanley Cup has come to Vegas. The Vegas Knights game is tonight. I'm rooting for the Knights. Go Vegas, my new uh, adopted hometown here. And if you'd like to send Bitcoin to our normal address, which is also a Segwit address, uh, you can send it right here. Uh, thanks for your support for the show. If you like tutorials like this, send us more. And let's go back uh, through the questions, make sure we didn't miss anything. Jeremy Sager asks, Trezor is mainly for cold storage or do people use it for transactions while out and about, like at a restaurant? Uh, I think it would be the way I just used it right now. I didn't do the smartphone integration. I'm not sure what that's like. Uh, presumably, if you had a USB-C port on your smartphone, you could plug it in directly. I'm not sure how that works. It might be for Android or a different kind of phone than the iPhone that I have which obviously doesn't have a USB-C connection because they're not following any standards. Um, but I would think this is mainly for uh, cold storage at home. I have seen people who are travelers who travel with a couple of Trezors. Uh, one of them's kind of their safe, secure Trezor. One of them is kind of walking about uh, using out in the public Trezor. Uh, that is possible, but you'd really have to get into the mobile phone app uh, is what I've seen. If you're going to use your laptop, it's going to be a little inconvenient. Uh, what you might want to do is have your money on your Trezor, then maybe send some of it to the wallet on your phone. Uh, use that to carry like 20, 30 bucks. Uh, keep the hundreds of dollars on the Trezor. Um, remember, you can buy more than one Trezor. Uh, if your Bitcoin or your altcoins or whatever are worth a million dollars, get a couple of these, you know, spread it out. Uh, don't just keep it on one. Uh, Jeremy agrees. He thinks it'd be a hassle unless you're moving large amounts. Uh, they say that the Android app doesn't support SegWit. Uh, so that's an upgrade that Trezor needs to make to their Android app. Uh, I haven't tried the Android app. I don't have an Android phone. I should, I should probably get one just for testing stuff like this out. Um, Prod SR bought a Model T last week. Uh, it says if you want a discount, hit him up. Also, you can use the code MADBITCOINS, uh, if you, affiliate code for Trezor, if you're going to buy a Trezor. And remember, this was not sponsored by Trezor. They did give me a free Trezor. Um, I honored that commitment by making this video. Uh, but all my opinions, everything's been 100% true. Uh, I think they should write their recovery seed in black text, and they should put their name on the front of their box, uh, not holding anything back. It says, don't buy anything on Amazon. They're evil. Oh, Amazon, I buy so many things. Uh, this guy said he could see the private key and the screen reflections in my glasses. <laughs> Uh, MZ agrees there's a black magnetic clip in the, uh, in the package and you could stick this to the side of a, a wall or under a desk or wherever you wanted to uh, hide your treasure. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> 23 Yuva's jokes, he says, the Model T is available in any color as long as you want black, <laughs> which is funny because that's the old uh, uh, Ford, of course, Henry T. Ford, uh, Model T Ford. He, you can have any color you want as long as it's black. Uh, you can back up the keys in my Dropbox, Dax offers. <laughs> so it does look like there's a Dropbox integration. I didn't explore that this time, uh, but I assume that's another way of, block, of backing up your key. Uh, so let's see. The Trezor did not give me the seed words on the computer. They were only on the Trezor screen. Uh, that's the big advantage of uh, 
hardware wallets with a screen. I know that the ledger, I'm a fan of ledger as well, but the ledger does show the words on the screen. So if a hacker or even Google was watching my screen during this, they would have seen it if I was setting up one of the old ledgers. Uh, they do have the new ledgers, which I think show the words on the key, uh, but I don't know because I don't have a new ledger. If you work at Ledger and you want to send me a new Ledger, contact me via email. Uh, and if Trezor, if you're ever making anything new, uh, I'd love to check that out too. So let's see. It was um, it was a 12-word key. I didn't see an option to do a 24-word key. I think that would obviously be more secure, but more confusing to new people and harder to write down and harder to do properly. Uh, so... Let's see this. Uh, Dax says that his T1, the original Trezor, has 24 words. Uh, so it is probably an option. Uh, it says the ledger uses 24 words. Uh, so there might be a difference there. I don't know how secure each one is, the comparison there. I do know from a user perspective, it would be much harder to write down 24 words and to do it properly than to write down 12. We are talking about the security of your money, though, here. So... If you have a Swiss bank account with millions of dollars in it, uh, writing down 12 extra words isn't that bad. <laughs> so um, Brian Jones says he has the first model of Trezor and it works amazing. He might get another one just to have and make sure to, and he says that you should memorize your seed phase phrase. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, maybe make a song out of it. <laughs> but uh he says it could also save your bacon one day. Ha <laughs> ha, bacon reference in the chat. Uh, they say I should cover up my chat and my camera. The NSA is watching my words. Uh, grammar errors, US customs. This guy says, what about US customs? The Trezor looks so obviously like a Bitcoin hardware wallet. Ledger looks more like a USB stick. I, I don't know that the, the Trezor obviously looks like a Bitcoin hardware wallet. It does. It does look like a secure device of some sort. When I look at it, especially the new one with the screen, it reminds me of those old um, single pass uh, codes that the RSA and the NSA were using, uh, where it would, you know, like a US, like an Authy or a Google Authenticator, but on a little box. Uh, it feels like one of those. So yeah, it does feel like a spy device. Um, it doesn't blend in. The ledger, do I think the ledger would perfectly blend in either? Mm, it looks more like a USB key, uh, maybe. But if you're really, if you're worried about that, you could put it on an open dime and bury it in a book or something. I, I don't know what you could do. Put it inside something metal. Uh, it's very unlikely you're going to get by on that. Uh, but you can just tell them it's a Bitcoin wallet. I don't, I don't think it's like that. Uh, say so, uh, you should have several hardware wallets, as many security experts advise. Uh, how do you remember several 24-word seeds? I agree with that. And that's where it breaks down with trying to memorize all your passwords. Uh, even I've given up and switched to a password manager as much as I know that's a, another kind of security mistake. <laughs> but uh, it's the best thing you can do to get your other passwords strong. Uh, Blockchain.info, they thought that it didn't accept SegWit addresses. Well, I, I think this is a SegWit address because it starts with three. And I copy and pasted it in there. So it looks like they're showing it now. Uh, I don't know if that... Uh, has been a recent change or anything. Uh, they're saying, oh, Roger alert, because I, I did the Bcash. Yeah, I'm not a Bcash fan, but uh, it was pretty easy to just create the wallets. And that's what I wanted to demonstrate here with the Trezor, that it is a really easy way to create all these wallets and you don't have to keep your coins on the exchange. A lot of new people out there probably don't know how to do this, haven't ever moved their coins off the, the exchange. And you don't have to move all your coins. You just have to move the ones you want to keep. Uh, but the exchanges are pretty good now. Maybe move 10% of your coins or 20% of your coins. You can back them up on your ledger or treasure, especially if you're a long holder. If you're going to try to hold these coins for a year or six months or something like that, just, just the act of moving them to the wallet can sometimes keep you from selling them uh, because it's such a pain. You'll have to move them back. And if your goal is to hold them for a year, uh, stick with your goal. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so chose was correct, not choose. Uh, I confuse those. Sometimes they're, uh, they look alike. Uh, delete Bcash. <laughs> if you have a stylus and there's time to try, I'll let it know how it responds to a stylus or a toothpick. Okay, so I'm not sure how to get the Trezor to uh, recreate the screen, but I would think a, a stylus would work. Uh, I was able to fat finger it pretty good, 
my main uh, point of contention there is when I did my pin number, it didn't show me the number before it went away. It just showed the circle. Uh, so it was unclear to me if I had pushed the right number or letter. Uh, that's a small thing for the interface designers if they're interested. Uh, Ledger is from France. Uh, I don't know where Trezor is. Trezor is from Czechoslovakia, I suppose. Oh, the Czech Republic, sorry. I was trained in another time. Um, no offense, Matt. Everyone secretly loves bacon. Uh, this guy says, uh, out and about buying coffee. He says, use your phone wallet. Use your treasure for cold storage. Uh, Bitcoin Yoda, crazy shit. Live, live YouTube video, and he just sent $3 around the world. Uh, the other neat thing about that is that you sent it through no middlemen. Uh, we're talking through Google. We're using YouTube. Uh, but you sent the Bitcoin through a totally different system. Uh, has nothing to do with YouTube. They can't even tell that I got $3, so I don't even have to send them 30 cents or even more. YouTube takes a large cut. They provide a great service, but they take a large cut. Uh, so let's see. Uh, post your Bcash address. Okay, so I'm going to do a copy and paste on my Twitter. Uh, maybe I'll do it live, but I, I hate that. Oh. <laughs> don't push p <laughs> oh it says trezor is from holland really i love holland oh look cool they sent out a, a picture of the trezor uh with the uh blueprints that's pretty cool uh so here it is from my no this is how the tweets are made the magic See, we can really test out that long tweet thing. Ah, not very long. All right, this is how the sausage is made. Isn't it great? <laughs> no. <laughs> no comments. Viewers dropping. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to do all this. I think we'll split this into a couple of tweets. Twitter for adding that extra tweet button. And, and this is a good chance if you have any of these altcoins, you're a big altcoin fan, you want to donate me some altcoins. Everyone's always like, why don't you accept some altcoins, blah, blah, blah. And really it's because it's a pain in the butt. And um, this new treasure thing made it pretty easy. Uh, so shout out to them from my... Let's see. Yeah, this is this is good enough. People can watch the show and figure out what I'm talking about. <laughs> I should post my Bcash Segwit address. Uh, that'll be hard to find. Uh, but here it is right here. If you want to donate to any of the addresses that I created during this video, you can find them right here on Twitter. Uh, if any of them catch on, I might put them on the websites, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, I think I've answered all the questions. If anyone has a last minute question, try to get it in right now. Um, but I'm going to go towards the end. Uh, Trezor, put your name on the box. That would be note one, number one. Note number two, use black ink on the recovery card. It's hard to see the gray. Note number three, people have big fingers. Show the actual numbers when I push numbers in uh, before they disappear. Show them before they disappear. And uh, that's about it. For uh, Thanks to everybody for watching. We had around 100 viewers. Uh, give us a thumbs up and a share. If you like more demo videos like this, message these companies on Twitter and ask them to send me a device. I'll review pretty much anything that anyone will send me. Uh, again, I'm going to review it fairly. If it's no good, if it doesn't work, you're gonna hear about it. I was able to get through this demonstration without it breaking and without it exposing my private keys until I held up this piece of paper. Now it says getting started. Um, but yeah, I didn't expose anything, so I think that was good. Uh, that's about it. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.